Hey guys, it's Vitlin Nako from Softuni, the software university. I'm here again for the next part of my free Java basics coding tutorial. This tutorial is a series of video lessons with hands-on coding exercises on Java programming for absolute beginners. Today, I continue with the next lesson, which is devoted to wow whoops. If you missed the previous parts of this tutorial, please review them first to catch up because it will be complex for you to, to start from the middle. So in this lesson, I'll explain and demonstrate the wow whoops or how to repeat a block of code while certain condition holds true. After solving several exercises with wow whoops, I'll explain when to use the wow whoop and when to use the for whoop. Wow whoop vs for whoop. I will give you some examples and will demonstrate how to organize an infinite wow loop with a break condition. Because repeating a piece of code until an exit condition is reached is used in many practical situations in programming, so you should know this programming technique very well. We shall use this when we solve uh, practical exercises during this tutorial and later on. At the end of this lesson, as usually, we shall solve several practical coding problems and we'll submit the solutions, the source code, to the judge system for automated grading. As I explained many times, you should put your time and effort mostly on the exercises. Remember this. Exercises are the most important thing to do if you want to learn programming. To learn coding, you should code. Coring is a skill, it's a practice, it, need, it needs a lot of doing, a lot of practice to master it. Okay, let's now go ahead with the wow whoops lesson. Why we need wow whoops when we uh, develop software uh, in practice? Uh, assume this real life example, box of books. Assume we have a box full of books, but we don't know how many books we have. The books might be 10 or 20 or we don't know. It's just a box of books. So we can take the first book and remove it from the box. Later, we can take, uh, take the next books and remove it from the box. Later, we can keep removing uh, books from the box until the box is completely empty. Okay, so this is uh, what the wow whoops is in practice. While the box is not empty, please take a book and remove it. If it is not empty, take another book and remove it. If it is not empty, take another book and remove it. We don't know preliminary how many times we'll remove a book from the box, but we know for sure that uh, we have a condition, an exit condition at which moment we can stop removing books at the moment of which the box is empty okay so let's demonstrate this control flow statement the so-called wow whoop in practice using java i will show you how to use this in java so the wow whoop is used to repeat a block of code until an exit condition is met this is how it works wow and some condition for example wow and it's less than five. This is the start. We can have some kind of initialization here before the, the wow whoop. Uh, the condition is, is checked. If it is true, the comments inside the whoop body will be executed. If the condition is false, the comments will not be executed. And after the comments are executed in the whoop body, the condition is checked again and if it's true, they are executed again, and this repeats until the condition is uh, finally broken or, uh, or is false. Once the condition is false, uh, the whoop exits, and the one just after the whoop here will be executed. So this is how the while whoop works, and I'll show you this in action using Java. So this is an example. We want to print the numbers from one to five. We start from int i is one, from the initial value. While i is not reached five, we print i and increase i. This is something very, very simple. I will create a new file, a new project here, 
uh, in my IntelliJ idea uh, IDE, uh, something like file new project, which will be called wow oops. Uh, I'll create a comment white app. Wow, whoops, Java. Okay, without a package, this will be empty. And I'll say finish in this window. Now I have an empty project which holds my main method here and I can work with wow, whoops. So let's see this example. Int i is oh int i is five is one uh so why i is still not reached five i do something print i and then in increase i by one control f5 and this is what we shall have here uh run the main maybe control f5 doesn't work at the first moment see what happens the numbers from one to five are there if we forget to increase i this will be endless whoop while i is less than five print it and i is currently one and it will be i one for very long time so this is how the wow whoop works it may work even differently for example i can start from 10 and i can multiply i by two uh, for example i equals i by two for example i start from one until i reach uh, until i is less than 100 millions so see what will happen it will be one two four one two four sixteen etc this is the two to the power of n function and this is the biggest number which is less than this number here so this is how the wow whoop work we can have an initializing block before the whoop just like with four whoops okay this is the, the how it works it has the condition this is the most important while this condition is true the whoop body will be repeated if the whoop body is a single command it may state like this if the whoop body holds several comments, which is more typical, you should obligatory have this uh, curly brackets. Okay, so let's go ahead with the first problem. It's called decreasing numbers. We want to print the numbers from n down to 1, 1, using a while whoop. We can do this with forward whoop as well, but now we are learning about how to use while whoop. So we will uh, write a program which receives a number n and prints the number from n to 1. It's not a function, it's a program, Java program, uh, which will receive the number n and will print from the numbers from n to 1, just like it's shown below. This will be called decreasing numbers. Okay, I'll go at IntelliJ idea and we'll say new Java class decreasing uh, numbers.java okay so i have this and i'll define the main method and inside the main method uh, i will have i will first define the scanner to read the input scanner scanner equals to new scanner of system dot in okay and now what i have uh decreasing numbers okay i start from n int n equals to scanner dot next line next uh next int okay and now i say wow n is bigger than or equal than one please do the following print n and then decrease n let's see whether this works correctly or not just a moment uh i will need to run this project because control f5 run the previous one if i have five the output is five four three two one okay so now what's next i can execute this again i if i enter 10 i have the numbers from 10 to 1 
Okay, let's see what I had in mind before the start of this pro of this lesson. Uh, I have number which I read it from the scanner. While the number is bigger than one, I print the number and decrease it. That's all. Let's take the next problem. It's called number in range. Write a program to read the number in the range from one to one hundred. So the person enters a number, a number from the console and checks if, the program should check if the number is in the range from 1 to 100. If no, uh, the user is invited to enter a new number. Otherwise, the number is entered and the program stops and the, the uh, input number is printed. So the idea is that please enter a number. If the number is invalid, please enter again. If the number is invalid, please enter again and repeat this many times until a valid number in the range from 1 to 100 is entered. For example, the person enters minus 10. This is invalid. It enters again 101. It's invalid. It enters again 50. It's valid. It's within the range. So the program prints this number and stops number in range let's solve this problem new java class number in range okay so i'll define the main method i'll take this scanner here because i don't want to type it again and i'll import it so i do like this uh wow i enter a number uh, int num equals to scanner dot next next integer okay wow num is not valid which means that num is less than one or num is bigger than 100 i'll do the following uh i'll just enter again and i'll print something like uh invalid number try again for example and i'll enter this so finally i'll print a uh, valid number colon and num let's run this and check whether this works correctly or not so i enter some big number it says invalid try again I enter some negative number and say try again. I enter, for example, 38. It's valid and the program is finished. So here we use while wow because we never know how many times this code will be uh, repeated. So we have uh, a set of comments here, the whoop body, and we don't know exactly how many times this whoop body will be repeated. It might be repeated zero times because the, and the number entered here is already correct or it might be re repeated thousands of times but we never know preliminary. For example, if we have valid number from the very beginning, this whoop will never execute because the this uh, exit condition will be met uh, at the start. So this whoop will never be uh, executed it will be executed zero times okay let's go ahead with the uh, solution i had in mind before the start of the lesson uh, it's exactly the same to be honest so i don't need to command it further okay we learned how to use while and how to use for whoops and how to choose the right whoop type but Let's see now uh, when to use while wow and when to use for. Uh, generally, while wow or for, both whoops can repeat a block of code multiple times. But the for whoop is typically used when we know preliminary the number of iterations. For example, we want to repeat exactly n times something. For example, we want to read n numbers from the console or we have n students and for each student we want to check something we know exactly the numbers of iteration typically we want to repeat from 1 to n or from 0 to n minus 1 or some more strange uh, uh, whoop with a step we use while when we don't know when the exit condition will be met 
For example, uh, we repeat until stopped. We read a number from the console and we enter zero, we stop. This is very typical for uh, wow whoops. If we don't know when the exit condition will be met, we use wow. If we uh, repeat something several times and we know this number, how many times the repeat, uh, the number of iterations, we use four. Okay, let's see now another problem called odd number. It's about writing a program to enter an odd number. It should read integ numbers from the console until an odd number is entered. Integers. Okay, it prints the odd number as output. So it's very similar to the previous one. We read something and if it is odd, it's printed. Otherwise, we enter again. So numbers in range, I will copy and paste this and we'll name it odd number or enter not number. So it takes a number if num percent two is zero, the number is even, I will say please enter an odd number. And finally, I print the entered odd number. Let's start this. It's very similar. I initialize the scanner. Then I read a number. I enter a number. While the number is even, I enter a number again. Let's see this in action. I run this and I enter, for example, 20 at the start. Okay, please enter odd number 24. 24, please enter an odd number. 5, I'm done, odd number. Or from the start, I enter an odd number directly, for example, 3, and the wow loop will never be executed because this condition is false at the start. Okay, this is the solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson and it is in practice the same one. Okay, the next problem is code number processor. It's about writing a program to process a sequence of comments. Uh, we read an initial number from the input and we read a sequence of comments, comments like ink, deck or and. Ink adds 1 to the number, increments the number, dex inc decrements the number, and end prints the number and stops the program. So if we have 5 inc, this will be 6 and the output will be 6. If we have 5 dec and the output will be 4. Number processor. Let's solve this problem using wow whoops. I'll create a new Java class called number processor number processor okay and in the main method i'll have uh, this scanner and maybe uh, the input here so i read the number initially but and i say wow scanner uh, i'll read a, a command string command equals to scanner dot next next while I read the commands string command is scanner dot next while while the command is not equal to end this means that the command is not end and I should not stop finally I, I will print the number but now if the command is ink I'll say num plus plus otherwise if the command equals tech I'll say num minus minus else I'll say system dot error I'll print an error this is a way to print errors they will be covered differently uh, invalid Comment and I'll do nothing. So finally, I'll print when this output. So what's the idea? I read a number. I read a comment. 
If it is not and I check for ink or deck and execute them or for invalid command and then I repeat the loop. If it is not and uh, I will need to read the next command here. Uh, it's something like this. I read a command. For example, I read I read five here. Then I read a command. For example, this ink. Okay. Is it end? No. It's ink. It's ink. So the number will be incremented. And uh, I will read the next command. The next command here is end. And now the loop will stop. Let's run this to check whether it works correctly. So I'll have, for example, five as input. Oh, it's invalid command. Why this happens? Do you know why this happens? I, I know why. Because uh, it, it doesn't trick the next one. Because after next int, next one, one doesn't work. So we need to have integer dot, dot parse int of scanner dot next one. We cannot use the next one after uh, after next int. Let's run this again and check whether it works correct. Okay, we have five, increment five, increment five, increment five, it should be eight, decrement five, it should be now seven. I said hello this is invalid command and I say and and the output should be seven. It works absolutely correctly. So this is how we can organize and this is where uh, th this program and this is where the wow loop is very useful when we don't know at which time we should stop. Okay, let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of the project of the lesson. I read the number, but as a whole line, not as ne next in as next line. Then I read the comment. If the comment is not end, while well, the comment is not end, I execute the comment if I recognize it. Uh, maybe we should have default here and print an error message. And finally, in at the end of the wow loop, I read the next line again, and I print the number. Finally, because this is the output from our program, the, res the end result. Okay, so let's extend our knowledge with the so-called break operator, which is very useful because sometimes we want to exit from a loop under a certain condition. I'll show you how. The break operator is used for prematurely exiting a loop. It just exits the loop unconditionally and it skips everything to the end of the loop. Uh, so we can only exit a loop or use break inside the loop's body. If we try to use break outside of, of a loop, uh, it will say, uh, sorry, this is invalid and the program will not compile. When the break is executed, the code inside the loop's body after the break is skipped and it doesn't execute, which is obviously because break just breaks the loop. So, this is an example of typical usage. Well, true. Uh, usually we have an infinite loop combined with break. We do something. For example, we enter a person name. We check whether the name is empty. If it is empty, we stop. We break. Otherwise, we process this person name. For example, we store it in a database or we print it or we... Uh, store it in a file or we send it over the network etc 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 so this is a very typical pattern of implementing whoop logic uh, it's used when we don't know at which time the whoop will break we know that we will repeat something many times but we don't want the exit condition so we write while true we do something we check for exit condition and uh, execute break and after that, we do some more code. This is very, very, very common and I'll show you how to use this. Okay, uh, assume we have the following problem. Uh, we want to sum numbers from coming from the console until zero is entered. So 
we read an integer number, for example, five, and until we read zero, we say while true, because we don't know at which time we will stop. We take the next num number, and if it is zero, we stop. Otherwise, if it's, if it's not zero, we add it to the sum and we print this sum. This is something very, very uh, useful and I will demonstrate this sum numbers until zero. I will create a class sum numbers until zero and I will demonstrate you how this works. So in the main method, I'll have this scanner, I'll copy it, control tab, control V, control C, control V, and I'll say wow true. Okay, and before that I'll have long sum is zero. And I say int uh, number as scanner dot read me the next integer. Now if the number is zero please break i stop the loop because this is by design we read numbers until zero is reached if it is not zero i have a valid number which i will sum sum is equal to sum plus the next number and and we print the current sum and that's all Let's see whether this works correctly. Like this, I run this some numbers. I try five, the sum. No, this is number processor. This is the previous uh, problem. I didn't start correctly what I wanted. For example, five, the sum is five. More three, the sum is eight. More 10, the sum is 18. More two, the sum is 20. Zero, goodbye. I can even print here goodbye now i start from for example 10 10 more 5 15 0 goodbye and i can start from 0 it's directly goodbye so this is the logic behind it's very clear to be read wow true get the next number if it is 0 stop Otherwise, sum and print. Very, very easy uh, to be uh, read and understand. This code is very um, friendly for uh, the user to be, for the developers to, to read it, to understand it and to support it. So I highly prefer this in many situations when we want to repeat something and we are not sure at the start uh, what how many times we can also print something like uh, enter a number or zero for end something like this now i enter five or zero for end 15 it's 20. Oh, looks like this is broken. 5. Huh. This is a bug in, in the IntelliJ idea. The cursor should be here because it stays on the same line. But this is how it works. And I enter finally 0. Goodbye. So this is the idea. If we, if we don't have this, we should repeat this to one. If we don't use while true, we should repeat this to uh, lines of code here because it should be something like this. Wow, num is not zero. Yes. Do you see these lines and these lines are the same. We repeat them because we want to say enter a number and we have the exit condition here this program works the same way it's it's the same program in fact but written a little bit differently okay let's run it so i start from uh, if i start from zero it says goodbye if i start from 
5, then 10, it will be 15, then 0, it says goodbye. It works completely the same way, but we have repeating code. So I highly recommend to avoid this repeating code using this way of organizing your program. While true, you do something, if you have the exit condition, break the loop and otherwise execute the loop watch. Okay, so let's go ahead with the infinite while loops. Uh, this is an extension to what I have already demonstrated you. If we use an infinite loop, we just we can just use while true. But usually this while true is never it never stays with absolute infinite loop. It usually has a way to stop it, some kind of condition which is checked within the loop loop body. And if it happens, we enter break, we execute break. So infinite loops are, are loops where true is used as a swoop condition. It is something like while true. This is an example of infinite loop, which is buggy. I enter uh, uh, some line while the command, I enter a command. While the command is not end, I print the command. What will happen here? Uh, I never change this command within the loop body. So if I enter, for example, hello, this will print hello many times. I'll show you, I'll demonstrate this to you. Um, I'll create, for example, comments and we'll make a main method here. I'll need a scanner, control C, control tab, enter, control V, enter. So this will be infinite loop by mistake. This is a bug. If I enter hello, it will say executing hello. Why? Because I don't have this one. I need to enter the next command at the end of this. Uh, sorry. It's the next command copy. So I just need to enter the next command. Now, this will work differently because if I say hello, it will ask me for a next command. For example, go. And if I enter end, this will stop. So this is a fixed variant of the previous problem. So beware that you change in the whole body this exit condition or just keep while true and uh, add an exit condition like this. While true, I read the command. If it is end break, otherwise I execute the command. This is more clear programming logic and I prefer personally this one. While true, I read the command. If the command is end or stop, please break, exit from the wood. Otherwise, execute the command. It's very, very clear and I'll show you. Wow. True. I enter a comment. If the comment is end, I'll break. And after that, I'll execute this comment and I don't need this one. Let's see whether this works correctly I say hello this is the first common go this is the second command and then this is the last common if I directly enter end it just exists so remember this pattern of organizing programming logic while true do something check for exit condition do something else this is the most important thing from today's lesson Okay, so we are done with the uh, concepts we want to learn today. Now it's your time to work on your homeworks, on your practical coding exercises, because remember, if you want to learn programming, you, want, you need to code every day. You will need to solve problems. You need to learn how to write code to uh, solve problems and to think, to uh, in, invite, invent algorithms and how to write the code to implement them so it's your time 
uh, you have uh, several exercises with uh, which should be solved with while loop uh, try to solve them try to write the code and i will be back after a while uh, to show you my solutions did you try the to solve the practical problems for the while loops okay now i will show you my solutions and will help you with these problems and will show you how i'm thinking and how i'm writing the code and i hope that your solutions are better and uh, or you will learn a new way to solve the same problems so let's start the first problem is called sum of digits write a program to sum the digits of given number uh, we read an integer from the console and we sum its digits and print the sum for example if the number is 5634 we have the first digit 5 plus the second digit 6 plus the third digit 3 and the last digit 4 the sum is 18. another example 151 plus 5 plus 0 is 6. another example minus 532 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10. this is the concept of summing the digits of a number let's solve this problem in java some digits i'll create a new class called sum of digits oh sum of digits digits finally i uh, typed this correctly i will create the main method and now i'll take the scanner from the previous lesson from the previous problem okay i have already imported the scanner and now i read the number uh, and num is scanner dot next next integer so int sum number is zero i'll start from sum zero and i'll see write something like well the number is less is bigger than zero what i will do i will take the last digit and last digit equals to number percent 10. why because number percent 10 gives the last digit of the number for example if the number is three four five zero one the last digit is one this percent 10 gives the last digit this is by definition okay and we add it to the sum sum plus equals last digit and then we want to remove the last digit so number is number number divided by 10. what will happen if we have for example the number one two six seven uh, and we divide it by ten it will be one two six point seven if it is floating point division or it will be one two six if it is integer division this will be lost but we have integer division because this is num int in this is int so we just delete the last digit and here we take the last digit okay and when we stop when the number is bigger than zero and finally we print sum of digits and the sum let's see and check whether this works correctly or not okay i enter three the two three nine four it's two and three five and nine fourteen and four eighteen or uh one zero 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 four it should be five looks like it works five it works and minus 25 digits noah a zero 
sum of the digits is zero. Why? Because it's negative and this while wow number is bigger than zero, this will never execute. So what we need is something like if number is less than zero, then number is minus number. And now it will work correctly for minus 25 because if, it, if the number is minus 25, it will become 25 and the algorithm will calculate seven. Or this can be replaced by number equals number of math dot abs of, of number. This will work correctly. Minus twenty five, or even we can do like this. We take the absolute value math.abs of the next integer coming from the console. So this is even better. Let's check minus 25. It works. Uh, 302, 5, 3002. Okay, so we are done with this problem. And let's see the solution I had in mind before the start. Why n is zero? Sum the last digit and remove the last digit. And aha, it directly works with the number n, but it's very very similar to what I have here. But they don't have last digit a separate variable. It's very similar, but this will not work for negative numbers. So we need to. Uh, check for negatives. Does this work for negative numbers? I think that this is important to be mentioned because it's because negative numbers are normal to to be here okay so the next problem is called favorite book it's about to write a, about writing a program to guest for a favorite book. It reads a book's names and then uh, many books are entered one after another. And if we have a match with the favorite book, we say book found and stop. Otherwise we say invalid book. See the example. The favorite book is Alice in the Wonder in Wonderland. Uh, we enter a list of books. The first is this Winnie the Pooh. The next is Alice in Wonderland. And for this book, it prints invalid. For the next book, it will also print invalid. Okay. And once we have a match, it says book found and stops the program execution. So I'll create a class favorite book with the main method here. I'll take this scanner to save some time and I'll say uh, string favorite book equals to scanner dot next next one because I don't want no one I will stop I'll say while well, true I'll read the book I'll read book and if the book is equal to the favorite book then I'll print book found and we'll stop the loop okay this is by requirement otherwise I'll print invalid book column and the book name 
that's all. I believe I'm done with this problem, but let's see whether it works correctly. My favorite book is Java for beginners, for example. The first book uh, is PHP 7, invalid book. Okay, Java script for dummies, it's invalid. Java for begi beginners book found and it stops. That's all. This is the concept of this problem and I have solved it. So the solution I have in mind before the start of this lesson is just read the favorite book name, read the book while the book is not the favorite book, print invalid and read again. Finally print book found. It's very similar but I used the wow through if break pattern instead of this wow whoop which repeats this one two times because this one and this one is the same and it's repeated two times. This is the means of this solution but it's correct. Okay let's go ahead with the next problem it's called find min and max. It's about writing a program to find the minimum and maximum uh, numbers among uh, uh, sequence of integers which starts from uh, which stops when the end in capital letters is entered okay we and we want to print the biggest and the smallest number this is an example we enter a sequence of numbers and finally we enter end this stops the program after the end command this result is printed the minimum number and the max number okay min and max new java class min and max number i'll create a main method i'll take the scanner because i don't want to print it again okay and i'll say int min is something very big integer dot max value something very big and max is integer dot min value something very small the max value is this one it's given in and this is the min value at max value is 2 billions and min value is minus 2 billions so now I'll say while well, true let next one string next one will be scanner dot next one if the next one is and I'll break otherwise I'll have int num is integer dot parse int of the next one and if the num is bigger than current max then max is num if the current number is less than the current minimum then I'll remember it min equals to num finally after the end I will say the min is and the max is and I print them. I believe that's all but let's test whether this works correctly or not. So I have 10 minus 5 200 and min is fi minus 5 max is 200 works correctly. 5 and works correctly. If I have empty, this will uh, print the min value and max value. I can add an if and say that well that we don't have minimum and maximum if we have zero elements. 
but the idea here is clear. We start from neutral values. Uh, we do a while loop. We read the next line. If it is end, we stop. Otherwise, we have read a number. We parse it. So we take the number value of this next line. And we uh, check for better maximum and better minimum. And we remember them if they are better. And finally, after all input numbers are processed, we print the minimum and maximum. Let's see the solution I had in mind before the start. It's very similar. We start from minimum and maximum, uh, neutral values. We have read the next one. Wow, well, it's not end. We parse the number. We check for better minimum and maximum and remember them. And we read the next one. The minus of this solution is that we have repeating this one, uh, but generally it's essentially the same. Finally, we print the solution. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. It's called special number. Uh, it's about writing a program to check if a given number is special. And by definition, special numbers are the numbers which are divisible by all of their digits without a remainder. Uh, we read an integer and print num is special or num is not special. Let's see an example. 23 is not special. Why? Because it cannot be divided by 2. Because it's not even. Okay? By these digits. Another example is 204. Can this be divided to 2 to, to, to first digit? Yes. This will give... 102. Can this be divided to 4? Yes. This will give 51. Okay. And can be divided to 0? Mm, we just skip zeros by definition. So 204 is special number. It can be divided to all of its non-zero numbers. Uh, digits. Okay. Special number. Let's solve this problem. Java class, I create a Java class called special number. And inside it, I'll create a new method. I'll take the scanner here. And int n is equals to scanner dot next int. I take the number n. Okay. And num wow num is bigger than is bigger than zero what i'll take is int last digit equals to num percent 10 and num equals to num divided by 10 this is the algorithm to extract the digits and now I will want to check if the number divided by last digit is not zero. And this will mean that no, this number is not special. So I will need a boolean is special, which will be true. And if I find a digit such that the number cannot be divided by this digit, I say that is special is false. So a number is special until proven opposite. And I'll break because if a number is not special, if we continue to check the, its other digits, it still will not be special. But here I change the number. I want this original number to, to check whether it's divided by, divisible by certain digits. So because I changed this number, I need the original number and also int num equals to mark dot abs num. Uh, so I have num. This num will be 
a variable used to extract the its digits one by one okay so I can even command this and just print the last digit just to see partially solve this problem run if I enter for example minus one to three minus one to three these are the digits this works correctly and for each digit uh, for each digit I am command this I can check whether it breaks the special condition if the original number percent was digit is not zero this means that this digit cannot divide the original number which means that this number is not special okay and finally if it's special then I'll print uh, that the original number plus is special otherwise I'll print that it is not special and let's see what will happen Run. for example 204 ah division by zero oh I need to check whether this last digit is not zero and this one let's see again 204 special minus 204 special uh, 23 is not special let's have other 55 is special because it divided by 5 one this number is special but this is not special because it cannot be divided by two 100 should be special because it can be divided by one that's all this is the algorithm we remember the original number and we take the, the number extract its last digit and delete this last digit if we find a digit which is not zero and which cannot divide the original number we assume the number is not special initially the number is special finally we print whether the number is special or not okay we're done with this problem and let's see what we had in mind before the start of this project uh, in this, this lesson uh, we read the number we remember the number in separate copy called non-digits we pass through the digits of the number we extract the next digit and we check for each digit where the whether the number divides uh, the digit divides this number or not and finally we print the final output it's essentially the same solution which i have already uh, implemented for you so let's go with the next problem the next problem is called special bonus it's about writing a program to apply a 20 percent bonus for the previous number before certain stop, stop number uh, i'll show you the idea here we have a so, something called stop number uh, we scan the numbers after that and if we find this stop number a number equals to this we take the previous one the previous number before the stop and we multiply this plus 10 20 percent which means that we just multiply by 1.20 and in this example we'll give we'll have 36 okay if we don't have the stop number we'll take this one for example if we have uh, only this 
only one number. If we don't have a stop number, we take the last one. And that's all. Special bonus. I'll create a class called special bonus. And I'll write the main method. I'll take the scanner and this maybe bonus if I uh, change this error this will not work so I'll need, need to use shift f6 which is rename bonus oh shift f6 bonus not bonus bonus okay stop number i'll read the stop number wow true i'll take int next num equals to scan scanner dot next int i take the next number if the next number equals to the stop number then i will break Otherwise, uh, nothing otherwise. I will break when I find the stop number. If I don't uh, find the stop number, I will read another number. Finally, I'll print the stop number multiplied by 1.2. 20% bigger. And that's all. Let's see whether this works correctly or not. The special stop number now will be 25 and I have some numbers 100, 200, 300. Now I have the stop number 25 and the previous number is 300. It should be multiplied by, oh not the stop num. Sorry. It should be not the stop num, but this should be the next num. This is a corrected solution. Let's say again, 25 is the stop number. We have 1000, 2000 and 3000. And we have the stop number. And now this 3000 should be multiplied by 1.2. Why? No, not the next num, the previous num. Oh, I'm sorry, I have mistaken again. I will need also the previous num, which initially in pref num will be the stop number. And now the pref num will be this current next num or this will be just num so i have the stop number i have the previous number at the beginning is this number because we don't have more numbers uh, but we need we read the next number if it is stop num we break and exit from the loop Finally, we remember the, the current number as previous because at the next step here, this previous will be the number before this num. Okay, and now this should work correct. Let's try again. 25 is the stop number, 100, 1000, 2000, 3000, and we have 25. At this moment, this pref num should be this one. Enter. 3060 is correct. If we have just 25 is a stop number and we have 25, the previous number is 25, so this will be 30, which is 20% more of 25. If we have 1 to 3, 1 to 3, this should be. 30% more than 1 to 3. If we don't have the same number, 
the stop number this will never end we need to enter the stop number okay that's all of this problem so let's see the solution i had in mind before the start of the lesson i read the stop number this is by problem definition i remember the previous number which initially is this stop number because i don't have any other so i read the the next number and the previous is obviously the number before that the stop number now if it is the stop number i should stop and print the previous number increased by 20 percent and now i change the previous number with the current number because after that i read the next number so if we have some numbers here and now this is num this will be the previous number but when i read the next here at the next iteration this will not be interesting this will be the prefnum and this will be the num so at the end of this iteration i remember the current number as previous and i read the next so at each moment in the time this variable will hold the previous number before this num okay so let's go ahead this is the printing let's go ahead with the next problem the next problem is called sequence to k plus one we want to write a program to print the values of a uh, special sequence which is defined by the number one and two times the previous plus one uh, what does this mean that we have one the next is two times one plus one which is three and the next is two times three plus one which is seven and the next number is two times the previous seven plus one which is 15 etc so we have three seven fifteen the problem statement says that we enter an integer n and we print all sequence number less than or equal to n for example for 8 it's 137 for 15 it's 13715 sequence 2k plus 1 i'll create a class called sequence 2k plus 1 because this plus it's invalid as a class name so i'll write it by letters name i'll need this two lines here but this will be n and while num is less than n i'll start with num1 while it is less than n i'll print this number and we'll say number is number multiplied by two or two times the number plus one finally no i don't uh, i don't need to print anything else looks very simple let's see whether this works correctly eight one three seven fifteen one three seven ah less than or equal 15 it should be 137 15 137 15 if we have something bigger works correctly as well so we are done with this problem this is the solution while k is less than n we calculate the formula and we print this k very 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 simple account balance is the next problem it's about writing a program to calculate an account balance we start from balance zero we read incomes or expenses uh, positive numbers are incomes negatives are uh, expenses and we print increase the money and decrease the money 
finally we print the balance. Just see the example, it's easier to understand it. We have account balance zero in the, in the beginning. We uh, get $500, for example. This is increase and the account balance is 500 uh, and uh, in, it's increased by 500 now we have this and we increase by this we have negative value which is money spent so we have decrease by this value in absolute uh, value finally we have end and we need to have this sum so this is a variant of Sum, summing a numbers if we have summing a numbers we can change the code and obtain this result so do we have some numbers we have until zero i'll copy this control c control v account balance okay so what i have balance 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 I read a number if it is end but I need to take the next one next one if next one is and then I will break and will finally print the balance balance otherwise I will submit this to the balance and will the next number which the number is something like Uh, it should be double maybe and this should be also double double num is double dot parse of this next line and here I should say if num is positive then I'll print increase plus the number otherwise I'll print decrease and minus number because if it is minus 80.35 is decreased by the the minus the opposite value of this let's see whether this works initially i have a balance of zero i add ten dollars i increased with ten i add more twenty i have thirty now i spent five i'll have twenty five and i have twenty five works correct I have empty account and it's zero I have empty account I add twenty dollars I spent one point five dollars minus one point uh, sorry minus one point five I spent one point five now I should have eighteen point five uh, and eighty point five looks correct so let's check again I have the balance I read the next line if it is end I stop otherwise I take the number which is at the next line I increase add it to my balance and I print whether this was increase or decrease and finally I print the balance very simple so this is how it might be also solved but it's very similar I take the input if it is end break, I take the amount, I add it and I print. This solution is exactly what I had created for you a few seconds ago. 
Okay, so this was the last problem and I'm happy to summarize what we have learned today. Uh, the while loop executes a block of code multiple times uh, while a certain condition is true. If the condition is true, the loop body is executed. Again, it is checked if the condition is true, the loop body is executed and this continues until the loop condition is broken. We use for loops when we initially know the numbers of iterations or how many times we want to repeat the loop body. We use while when we don't know how many times we will repeat the body and when we have certain exit condition. Uh, we can use infinite loops with break in order to impl implement more flexible logic like I have shown you several times where we have while well true and we read some data or we take something we check some condition for example uh, we have the command and and we break at this moment after that we process the data we have so we can have while well true with if break pattern and this pattern is very useful to organize more complex for loops uh, a more complex while wow loops. Did you like this code lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free videos, tutorials on computer programming, Java, software engineering and many others. Get free access to the practical coding exercises and the automated judge system for these code lessons to uh, evaluate your code from the exercises you write. Get help from the mentors and meet other learners. We, uh, we will answer your questions. And it's all free, completely free. So join now.